Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. We just found out about a bunch of deleted scenes in Thor Love and Thunder featuring Galactus, some X-Men deleted scenes, so we'll break it all down. There was even an alternate ending to the movie with Lena Headey's character. I'll explain who she was supposed to play. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They actually just posted a trailer for a lot of the big stuff coming up in the first half of next year, like the Secret Invasion trailer, Loki Season 2 trailer. I just did a big breakdown video of that, so I'll post a link for it at the end of this and down in the description below. But recently, you've probably seen that Marvel has been dropping more deleted scenes and stuff that was taken out of Thor Love and Thunder, and it was huge. Usually with movies that have a lot of deleted scenes, you joke that there's like a whole other movie inside the movie that they actually released, but there's like 10 different movies inside Thor Love and Thunder with all the different ideas that they had. Recently, one of the Marvel artists that worked on the movie revealed that Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, Mighty Thor, was going to be fighting a version of Galactus, Fing Fang Foom. It could have been the World Serpent as well. And the same Gargantos, Shumagorth looking creature that was in Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. So it did seem like at one point they had planned to have some more crossover with Doctor Strange 2, maybe some of the other Marvel movies. And because this is a huge deal, literally and metaphorically, like you have a lot of huge monsters, Galactus, literally huge. What was originally going to happen is that we were going to see Jane Foster's Mighty Thor adventures on Earth while Thor was busy with the Guardians of the Galaxy before he'd come back to Earth. So like Jane Foster's Thor versus Galactus would have happened during a completely different part of the movie. And I think it's easy to understand why they got rid of this part of the movie because there's so many big characters that they're just burning through super quickly as a sort of jokey kind of way. The way they actually cut the movie in the final version that we saw on screen is a little misleading. Like when Thor comes back for the first time, it seems like it hasn't been that long, but in actuality, a good amount of time has passed and Jane Foster has been Thor wielding Mjolnir for a good long while. They just didn't do a very good job of explaining the big time jump between her getting the hammer and then Thor coming back to New Asgard. You have to imagine her battling all these different characters like Fing Fang Foom, Shumagorth, Galactus being like a six, seven hour version of the movie, which would be great. I'd love to see a seven hour Marvel movie. But the other obvious big reason why they probably didn't want to include Galactus in the final version of the movie is because they're saving him for like Marvel Phase 7. We might see some teasers for him during Marvel Phase 6, but I'm not expecting him to be like a huge character, metaphorically or literally, during the new Fantastic Four movie, or at least the first Fantastic Four movie, maybe in the sequels. The other big Galactus deleted scene is also connected to an X-Men deleted scene where they go to Omnipotent City because there was meant to be hundreds and hundreds of gods all over the place, everywhere you look, from all different parts of the comics. When they come to get Zeus's help and they sort of pan around the room, they feature a bunch of different groups of gods. But if you look at this scene here, zoom and enhance, it depicts one of the sections of the Godhead, you know, around this big chamber here that they featured in the background of all these scenes. Like I said, there are countless sections, each of them having this many gods in each section. So there are probably way, way more deleted scenes and Easter eggs of gods like this. Zoom and enhance, we'll start with the biggest ones here. Like there are obviously many, many gods here. This is their version of Galactus, who looks very much like old school Galactus, very purple from the comics. And look right next to him, this isn't the Juggernaut himself, this is meant to be Sidorak, the god who Juggernaut gets his powers from, and the god who Doctor Strange's Crimson Bands of Sidorak spell came from when he was using it in Avengers Infinity War against Thanos. They also call this item during the first Doctor Strange movie that they used to trap Kaecilius in, the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. <laughs> The reason why they call both of them the Crimson Bands of Sidorak is because one of them is a spell based on Sidorak's power and one of them is a relic imbued with Sidorak's power. Kind of like the Crimson Gem of Sidorak where Juggernaut gets his powers from. The Sacred Gem shall prepare himself to receive the power of the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. There are a ton of other gods here too, like over to the right you see a version of Hercules just sitting right next to them. This actually looks kind of like a version of Ares over here too. There were a bunch of other Greek gods, like we saw a version of Athena actually in the movie, we saw a version of Dionysus, but there were many other Greek gods that they didn't include. I'll talk about those other deleted scenes at the end of the video though. But like we did see a version of Hercules show up at the end of the movie in the post credit scene where Zeus declared war on Thor and the Asgardians and sent him to kill him. That wasn't meant to be another Avengers 5 King Dynasty incursions or Secret Wars teaser. That was a teaser for something more like a War of the Realms type of event that they might do is like another mini Avengers crossover movie like Captain America 4 New World Order is like a mini Avengers crossover movie. Civil War is another good example of that, like a Thor based movie where he's like the main character where you have a ton of other crossover characters. And it winds up being more of a War of the Gods, War of the Realms literally situation. 
But talking more about Galactus, early on I'd actually wondered if they teased characters like Silver Surfer or Galactus through Thor Love and Thunder somehow because old school Thor encountered Galactus a bunch of times, encountered Silver Surfer a bunch of times. It looks like they had a plan to do that initially, I think because Galactus is a big part of the end of the Gore the God Butcher storyline in the comics. So the comic book version of Gore the God Butcher very different in the way that Thor fought him and defeated him. Later in that timeline, after they've defeated Gore, the Necro Sword continues to exist in this sort of void, but at the end of this timeline you have a much older version of Thor, and it's basically Earth slowly dying its last breaths, like it's one of the last remaining living planets. There are no other planets for Galactus to feed on, so he comes for Earth, and it becomes basically Thor versus Galactus, Thor using the Necro Sword to try and defeat Galactus. But it's happening in the future of that timeline. So I think it's pretty easy to assume why they didn't want to actually include Galactus in the movie. Like, we'll just get rid of this and include him in some later storyline, slightly different version of the character. Because one, you also have to kind of explain why he's there. Like, there's this whole explainer that you have to add on top of all the crazy stuff that's going on during the movie. Also, showing off his physical appearance looking like this kind of locks them into this version of Galactus too. And I think the version that we'll wind up seeing in the MCU eventually will look a little bit different. What they might wind up doing long term though is just because Galactus is such a big concept, they might leave him for Marvel Phase 7 like he could be part of the next saga after the multiverse saga. We're also not going to get the Fantastic Four movie till the beginning of Marvel Phase 6 and it makes sense that they would want to wait to include them first in the MCU like the new versions whichever those are going to be and then bring in Silver Surfer and Galactus. And because they did that in the Fox Marvel movies Kevin Feige said their big thing is doing a version that we haven't seen before like doing something with the characters we haven't seen before and that means not just going straight back to Silver Surfer and Galactus. So it sounds like when they do introduce those characters in the MCU like it'll be a slightly different version of Galactus with a slightly different backstory. Bringing the Sidorak character in the MCU would also brought its own challenges with it like canonizing more X-Men mutants related stuff which they're doing right now like it makes sense that they want to introduce more X-Men characters. When people think of the Juggernaut though they mostly think of that funny X-Men The Last Stand scene introducing the character. Don't you know who I am? I'm the Juggernaut bitch! I still laugh every time I see that Vinnie Jones clip. Juggernaut was also a big character during Deadpool 2. We know that Deadpool is coming into the MCU, so technically that would canonize that version of Juggernaut to the MCU when they cross over. The funny thing about this version of Juggernaut 2 is that even though he does look way more comic book accurate, like he's huge, like comic book Juggernaut, he's actually voiced by Ryan Reynolds himself. Like they just changed his voice a little bit. If you listen really carefully, you can kind of pick out Ryan Reynolds in there somewhere. I'm gonna rip you in half now. Juggernaut is Professor X's stepbrother. They did a version of his origin story during X Men the Animated Series. There were multiple alternate endings to the movie. Like, there was no one alternate ending. There were a bunch of different versions of the ending at one point. This one was titled Stealing Thunder, and it was Thor meeting a version of this woman here who I believe is meant to be Lena Headey's character. She was going to play a version of Hera, Zeus's wife, during the movie. Like, during the movie, Zeus is a big character. They make a bunch of jokes about him. They show you Hercules in the post credit scene. But you never actually see Hera in the movie because she was played by Lena Headey. She filmed a bunch of these scenes for the ending and it looks like she's having a very sinister ending scene with Thor and I think this was meant to be part of the movie when Zeus was actually portrayed as a more good benevolent character. You may have seen some of the Zeus deleted scenes from completely different parts of the movie where Zeus like legitimately just gives Thor his lightning bolt instead of him stealing it during the movie. Like a completely different plot for what Zeus was supposed to do. Power comes from the heart. Like the Romans say, apri il cuore. Open your heart. Open your heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eternity is at the edge of space. You go and you go until you can't go no further. There you will find the altar of eternity. Thunderbolt will take you there. You sure you won't come with us? We could really use the King of the Gods. No, 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 no. To go there, you must be pure. Zeus is many things, but he's not pure. Whole different vibe of the character, like he tries to help Thor, teach him some lessons, and send him on his way to go fight Gore the God Butcher. Whereas during the theatrical cut, they portray Zeus as more of a bad character who wants to kill Thor at the end of the film. So I think in this alternate ending, Hera was supposed to get that plot and she was going to set up this big Hercules post-credit scene where he then goes after Thor to try and kill him. 
I know a lot of you are also asking if a version of Loki is ever going to run into a version of Thor again. That's what Secret Wars is for, stuff like that. We'll see if there's any kind of Thor cameo during Loki Season 2, like we had Frog Thor during Loki Season 1, who was actually voiced by Chris Hemsworth. He actually did the grunts for Frog Thor. Everyone click here for my Loki Season 2 trailer video that they just released, and click here for my Frog Thor video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.